This is not the Earth created by the gods. It's just a signal currently being fed to billions of humans by IBM's computer called Orange. It's a virtual planet called Plutonium. Unlike other planets this is the open planet, generated completely by the photosynth based Xican using photographs on the earlier social networks like Flickr. And it is just a fraction of the changes that occurred in the last three decades. I am your artificial Google answer for the query, what events led to the current world? All of this started with a batch of 2003 IFTK GP students. Unknowingly, they were changing the world around them. Their work would lead us to the point where Earth would not be the same again. A change, which is inevitable and which took force in 2007 AD. It all started with Al Krishna's summer training in Australia. His exposure to research changed something in him. He sensed a changing world, and at a speed never seen before. On his next internship at CERN Laboratory in 2008, he was convinced that the world is going nanotech. Later in 2010 he joined CMU on a PhD program and worked on anal size switching devices based on organic molecules. He made a major breakthrough in nanoswitching technology at his internship at Bell Labs in 2012. The same year, IBM employed him at staggering $400 million a year. In 2014, he patented his nano-switching devices, working at 3 teraflops. The next year, IMB launched their processor named CRISP which was faster than any other processor on Earth. 2016. IBM buys Intel. It has now the processing power for all that can be imagined. IBM signs a deal worth $600 billion with Microsoft and Google to provide 3 million petaflops instruction per second to them. This is equivalent to the processing power required to keep track of all the molecules on Earth. And why do they need that amount of processing power? The answer to this question will take us to 2007 July 21st. At his training at Philips, Hans Raj invented a data compression mechanism better than any other known to humankind. Philips knew his talent and decided to go against their recruiting philosophies, they employed him. To 2010, he had nine major breakthroughs in the data compression technologies. He also had rules on his name confirming that with current technologies, the maximum compression capabilities has been reached. He brainstormed for next two years, and came up with a new molecular compression technology. He left Philips and joined Ranbaxy to give colors to his ideas. There he realized his idea. Every molecule can store some data. What if there is a mechanism to create molecules based on the data? Every kind of information will have a molecule for it. Molecules now can replace simple structures of Java and C. Carbon was in. To speed up the work, he led IBM to acquire Ranbaxy in 2013. 2014. He created something which would be known to the world as DNA of information. Within months, he proved the importance of his invention by storing whole of the Nwikipedia in the molecules of a pollen grain. 2015. Google paid IBM $900 billion for their DNA data technology to complete what is now known to the world with the name, Google Grid. Google Grid is the brainchild of Alok. His career started with his internship at Georgia Tech in 2008, where he worked on personal data exploitation using semantic data mining. He suffered a major setback when he was not offered PhD from any university in 2009. He decided to risk his career and worked in Georgia Tech as a research assistant for one more year. His risk paid off. He published a groundbreaking paper on personal identity detection using disparate information sources. He went to MIT in 2011. He published a major theory on neural computing in 2012 which was more efficient to store information if it were in graphical format. It is here that he realized the potential of his theory and joined Google and persuaded them to work on Google Grid. Google Grid is a database of every user on Earth. He doesn't have to use Google to give away his information, as now Google can trace anyone on Earth with their live Google Maps with constant feeds. He completed the beta Google Grid in 2015. But for alpha release they required more computing power. The power that will keep track of every activity of every human on Earth 24-7. And it is here when again Google was in business with IBM for computing requirements. Robin, on the other hand, had a very unpredictable struggling start. In 2009, he joins MSR and due to legal conflicts he loses all of his shares in MindKey. Frustrated, he switches to Google within first nine months in hope of a free working environment. He couldn't work there too for long. He left Google in first four months. Then his journey of switching jobs after jobs started. He joined Oracle for one month, then Apple for two months. Within 19 months he changed his job 9 times, until he joined Second Life. 
He got exactly what he wanted. He quickly rose and became Virtual Graphics Head by 2013. Profits rose, and ambitions too. He wanted Second Life to offer its avatars to leave Earth and venture into space. He wanted to provide a real space boat for each of his avatar. 2015. He studied the work of one of his batchmates named Arup, now working at Schlumberger. Arup joined John Hopkins University in 2009 and started working on stem cell research and neural control. Within one year he showed results. He published a paper showing that it's possible to control organisms using current signals. Working very hard for next two years, in 2012 he showed animals, especially rodents, can be controlled by computers. In 2013, he joined NASA to send rodents to Mars instead of humans. Following its success in 2015, Schlumbers recruited them to map the other planets. Schlumbers wanted to map other planets for its resources, looking for not oil, but plutonium, the new fuel, for all the technologies. Call it destiny, or luck. It was Shulo, his college friend who recruited him for this special post. For Shulo, it was an easy journey. Quickly after his degree he joined Schlumbs. 2010. He left Schlumbs and joined HBS for an MBA program but joined Schlumbs again for reasons still argued upon. Some say that this was because of his girlfriend from same college who joined Schlumbs in 2012, others, the reason was more than obvious, money. 2014. He was made the head for extra soldier search for energy resources. By late 2016, Schlumbs at Math Mars tied in many other moves, but without much result. All they had was the complete mapping, which could be converted in real 3D environment. But this is what Google and Microsoft wanted. They bought this data and the rodents at those planets and moons for more than $900 billion each. Microsoft was eyeing this data for more than five years. But someone debarred them from many things they wanted, especially if it's against Google. This someone joined McKinsey in 2009. After two year training at McKinsey he joined Harvard School of Law and studied intellectual property rights. Later he joined Microsoft as a PR manager in 2012. He devised a dream plan for Bill Gates against Google to sue it against all the privacy and piracy issues. This man one intelligent in Microsoft knew that. They sued Google for 37 billion dollars. Google was more intelligent. They bought this man for staggering $3 billion a year. He fought the case from Google against Microsoft and won it finally in 2015. Money earned with this case far exceeded the profit Google earned that year. Then he took Google to overtake Second Life in 2016. He was able to keep Microsoft away from the data Schlumps had because he precisely knew the inner workings of Zaycone. This someone is Mayer. Sharma joined Stanford rejecting Microsoft in 2008. But he later joined Microsoft in 2010. He worked on Microsoft's favorite project, Photosim. Rivi joined NVIDIA in 2008 working on its hardware acceleration technologies. Then he switched over to Microsoft in 2011 working on Zikon. Sharma was working on converting all the images available on social networks into a 3D environment, and Rahu was working on converting this 3D environment as the alternative of real Earth to humans. This was the reply of Microsoft for Second Life. Zaycon reached the market share of 32.22% within first two years of its launch. And it was obvious to them that if they want to proceed with their extra solar expansion, they need more computational power. And for their rescue, there was IBM. So you see, the computational power with IBM helped Microsoft and Google run their Zikon in Second Life. To extend their world to other planets, Schlumberger gave them the extra solar data. Second Life and Xu can combine to form what is known as Plutonian Planet. This merger was promoted by Google when they realized that Zycon was becoming more popular and offered Microsoft its Google Grid in return for the merger. Unlike Matrix, which you might have seen in 1999, this is a virtual world which you know. Every man has a dual identity here. According to statistics, 99% of population spend more than 13 hours a day on plutonium. All the legal cases of Microsoft and plutonium are handled by Google. And on this planet, the names of the three major countries are, IBM, Microsoft and Google. They all moved in different directions, but the Earth is round. All of them changed, the world we know today, unknowingly. Today is 7th March, 2040. And I am Sabda, your artificial personal secretary. Like me you can modify your voice, identity and sex here on plutonium. The new Earth for all of us.